Okay, here's the main menu. You can see the basic formulas. Number one, surface area and volume formulas, factoring formulas, binomial expansions, quad formula, slope formula, linear equations. I'll also show you the secondary menu, which has definitions and whatnot, such as real numbers, basic rules of algebra, systems of equations, absolute values, variation, exponents and radicals, complex numbers, and logs. So let's go through these in a little bit of detail. So we have the basic formulas. You know, we've got slope is, you know, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. There's actually a more detailed explanation of this uh, later on in one of the menus. Then we have the distance formula, the square root of x2 minus x1 squared minus y2 minus y1 squared. And then we've got the midpoint formula, you know, the uh, x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. The Pythagorean theorem, the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The basic rectangular area and the perimeter along with the circle pi r squared as the area and then the circumference is 2 pi r or pi d. The triangle area, 1 half base times height, trapezoid area, and parallelogram. Now, going on to the surface area and volumes, I've seen this a lot uh, where students kind of get tripped up with the cube volume and surface area. So I, I put that in there, the cube, surface area, and volume. Um, same for the prism. Cylinder, uh, a regular pyramid where it's one half P times L plus B, and then the volume is BH over three, and then the cone surface area, and then the volume. And then we go on to uh, factoring formulas. Now, one thing here you'll see the difference of two squares, you know, the X squared minus A squared. An example of that would be X squared minus 25. So that'd be like X squared minus five squared would be X minus five, X plus five. Now, I changed the format for the perfect square trinomials. Just so you know, when you expand a plus b quantity squared, it's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Same thing for the a minus b quantity squared. And they have the sum of two cubes and difference of two cubes. Again, you know, these equations are just like respect or streets. They go both ways. So then we go on to the uh, binomial expansions. Just a basic easy one. Um, and again, it was kind of in that last menu, but I wanted to show it specifically if we do the quantity x plus a squared or quantity x minus a squared. Same thing for x plus a cubed or x minus a cubed. Again, you can go to the left side or to the right side of those equations, whichever way you need to go for your uh, specific application. Now look, here's the quad formula in detail. So you know we have the standard form, form of quadratic where it's ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where x is negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now students have asked, hey, could you put a discriminant formula in there? So I did, you know, the b squared minus 4ac. And so if d, the discriminant, is greater than zero, there's two real solutions. If it equals zero, there's one real solution. And if it's if d is less than zero, there's two imaginary solutions. So that, that's pretty handy if your teacher not only asks you uh, what x equals, but then what are the uh, nature of the uh, formula, or sorry, the nature of the solutions there. So then we go on to uh, the slope formula, a little more detail, where m is change in y over change in x. You guys might have heard it as rise over run, or if you're may, maybe a little more advanced math class, it would be delta y over delta x. All that delta means is change. So then the delta y over delta x basically works out to be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. I put that little note there, x1 cannot equal x2, because at this level in math, we can't divide by 0. I don't want to go into that detail right now. Um, and then linear equations, we have the basic forms you can see in linear equations in any kind of algebra class, where y equals mx plus b, and I've defined m as slope and b as the y-intercept. You also have standard form, where ax plus by equals c. We have point slope form, where y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, where y and x are just going to be y and x, but the x1, y1 would be your actual point. I already have m as slope up there. And then horizontal line is going to be an equation y equals b, and vertical line is x equals a. So if you ever see that, where y equals a certain number, you know, oh, that's horizontal. Or vertical line would be, oh, x equals some number a. So let's go on there. And then I'm going to go to the more menu. So you may not need this except in a basic algebra class where they say, All right, what set does this number belong to? Sorry about that. Um, natural numbers goes one, two, three, yada, yada, yada. And whole numbers are natural numbers plus the number zero. And then integers are basically whole numbers plus negative natural numbers. So it goes negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. And then rational numbers, most people think of fractions um, where it's A over B, where a and b are integers. And again, b does not equal zero because we're not going to be dividing by zero at this point. 
And then irrational numbers um, where X is a real number and yet not rational. Um, things like that would be pi, E, or also uh, square root of 2. Um, just, just basically there. Um, next thing, we have basic rules of algebra. So if teacher said, hey, what, what uh, rule am I using here? It's like, oh, commutative. We're just changing the order of things, both for addition and multiplication. And then associative, oh, okay. We're changing where the parentheses are in an addition or multiplication. And then distributive, you're going to be distributing A, like A times a quantity B plus C would be AB plus AC. Um, same thing, you do A times quantity B minus C is AB minus AC. We also have the two identities, A plus 0 equals A, and A times 1 equals A. And then the inverse, we have A plus negative A is 0, and A times 1 over A is 1. Again, A doesn't equal 0. I, I'm just doing that 0 thing because I'm paranoid about uh, misinterpretations of those rules. And then we have a system of equations. So this is more of a definition thing. If it has one solution, it's consistent. Um, no solutions, it's inconsistent. And then infinite solutions, it's dependent and consistent. So going on, we also have absolute value. Um, if just so you want to know, absolute value of x equals x, as long as x is greater than or equal to zero, Otherwise, it's negative x if x is negative or if x is less than 0. Basically, they're saying the same thing. Um, if absolute value of x equals c, x equals c, or x equals negative c, um, so long as c is greater than 0. If absolute value of x is less than c, then we have, you know, negative c is less than x is less than c. Again, c is greater than 0. And if absolute value of x is greater than c, then c is, sorry, then x is less than negative c, or x is greater than c, c is greater than 0. So then we go on. Again, the uh, more menu here. We also have uh, variation. Now, this, this is super handy because a lot of people get confused about direct, inverse, and joint variation. So I give some examples there. If y varies directly as x, y equals kx. If y varies directly as x raised to the r power or x to the rth, this sounds kind of funny, um, we have y equals k times x to the r. If y varies inversely as x, y equals k over x. Um, if it varies inversely as x to the r equals y equals k over x to the r. k is going to be a constant in all these cases. And then if y varies jointly as x and z, y equals k x z. So going on, um, this is super handy, this part, the exponents and radicals. A lot, of, a lot of us kind of forget what happens when we multiply like bases. So in that first one, we have b to the x times b to the r equals b to the x plus r. Those that's what you call multiplying like bases. You add the exponents. The next example, b to the x over b to the r is b to the x minus r. So for dividing like bases, like base being b, we're going to subtract the exponents. Then we go further, b to the x, that whole thing to the r is b to the x times the r. So if you're raising a power to a power, you're going to multiply the exponents. I know it's kind of funky. That's why I put it there. Um, if we have an expression a, b to the x, just remember you're going to be raising everything to the x power, a to the x, b to the x. So for example, if you had like 5b to the x power, it would be 5 to the x times b to the x. It's something um, we often overlook when you know doing these problems. Um, next, we have a over b, that quantity to the x power. You're going to basically you could do a to the x as the numerator and then b to the x as the denominator. Now, one thing, and th this just still irks me to the day because I got this wrong in my algebra class uh, decades ago. Um, if x is even, then the x root of a is the absolute value of a. Remember, only if x is even. Like, so if x is 2, 4, 6, 8, etc., the x root of x equals the absolute value of a. And then if x is odd, the x root of a just equals a because we can have the third, fifth, or seventh root of negative numbers. Now, um, last few things here. If we have the x root of a um, times the x root of b, it's going to be the x root of a, b. And then if we have the x root of a divided by the x root of b, it's the x root of a over b. And last thing, if we have b raised to the negative x power, it's 1 over b to the x power. I include that because that's, that, that trips up so many students. And I put it last just so you see, like, wait, what happens if I raise b to a negative power? It's going to be 1 over b to that positive power. Now, we go on. We also have complex numbers here. So i is the square root of negative 1. I know they've been lying to you all these times. You can have a negative in the radical. You can at some levels of math and higher. So i is the square root of negative 1. 
And the set of complex numbers is a plus bi. And if b equals 0, the complex number is a real number. Okay? And then if b doesn't equal 0, like if it equals some integer value, um, the complex number is an imaginary number because you have that bi component to it. And the conjugate of a plus bi is a minus bi. So if you ever have to multiply conjugate, like say 3 plus 4i, the conjugate would be 3 minus 4i. Last thing, um, some students wanted uh, i's worked out to the fourth power. So i is square root of negative 1 at the top, but then you also have i squared is negative 1. i cubed is negative i, and i to the fourth is 1, as strange as it seems. Okay, um, last thing we have here is logs. So we have properties of logs, which really helps in expanding or contracting logarithmic expressions. So log of AB is log A plus log B. I usually tell students when you're multiplying in one log, you're adding in two. Um, conversely, if we're dividing in one log, like log of A over B, that would be subtracting in two logs. So log A minus log B. Next, if we have log A, that to the X, we can pull out the X as a coefficient of the log, so then it becomes X log A. Next, if we have log base t a, you can rewrite it as ln of a over ln of t. Basically, that's change of base formula. Um, last, if we have, or not last, but if we have log base t, t to the x, that equals x. That's usually a trick question on a lot of tests and finals in um, algebra classes, whether, whether it be algebra 2 or college algebra. Um, and then if you have log of 10 to the x, that equals x, because if we don't write the base of a log, we assume it's base 10. Next, we have ln of e to the x. That just equals x. Because you can pull out, again, that x as a coefficient. It's x ln of e. And oh, by the way, ln of e is 1. And then we have t raised to the log base tx. That equals x. And then 10 raised to the log x. That also equals x. Lastly, if we have e raised to the ln of x, that equals x. So that's all the formulas, definitions, and equations I have on the... Uh, Algebra X EQ1 program. If you have any comments, you know, definitely comment there. You can uh, post features you'd like to see in the next iteration of this program. So we have a growing library of programs available at mcstutoring.com. Uh, and again, your comments are what fuels uh, remakes of this because that SET program went from answering only about 20 to 25 percent of the questions on the SET math all the way up to about 30, 35 percent now. And we're probably in the iteration in the summer of 2024, we could answer about 50%, maybe, of some of the SAT practice tests available at the College Board. Okay, take care and good luck in all your math endeavors. I'll see you next time.